Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video here on the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the disappearance of the Palmer family. So, without further ado, let's go to the video. On November 14, 2009, the Palmer family disappears while traveling their vehicle, a red Fiat Duna weekend. They had left the city of José Marmol towards Pergamino, both cities in Argentina. The family was made up of four people, they being Fernando Pomar, aged 40, his wife Gabriela Villagran, aged 37, and their two daughters Candelaria, aged 6, and Pilar, aged just 3. As they did not reach Pergamino, the relatives who were waiting there tried to contact Fernando and Gabriela, but they were unsuccessful. Because of that, they decided to inform the authorities about the disappearance of the family. That's when they began a search of the entire region and later the family's house. However, the police was unable to locate them. On November 16, 2009, two days after the family disappeared, a man named Casimiro Frutos called police saying he saw a vehicle overturn on the side of the highway along a bend in the Route 31. Casimiro was in a double-decker bus that went to the city of Rosas. According to him, being on the second floor of the bus, he was able to see a vehicle with its wheels up and lights on in the thicket on the side of the highway. But even though he gave all the information to the police, they ignored him as they told him that they had searched the area and had found nothing there. On November 20, 2009, investigators obtained an image from cameras at the Phyllis Puto booth on Route 7, where the family had passed by. On November 23, investigators obtained new footage from cameras at another two booths, shot 20 minutes apart from the first image. In the image, you could see the four family members inside the vehicle. On November 26, a witness claimed to have seen the entire family strolling through a mall in the city of Almagino but investigators dismissed this information. On November 30, Casimiro Frutos, who had seen the vehicle overturned on the side of the highway on the 16th, made the return trip and saw the vehicle overturned in the same location. Outraged, he called the police informing them again, and yet again, they did not listen to him. The family disappearance quickly became news in all the newspapers in Argentina, with that numerous theories emerged by the population about what had happened to the family. Something very common when a case full of mysteries like this gains great repercussion. The police had already raised six theories of what could have happened to the family, the first being that they were out of the country, but this theory was soon discarded, as the searchers of the family's house found the children's documents. Documents these needed if they wanted to leave the country with the kids. The second was that they would still be in Argentina, but running away from debts. Fernando had been unemployed for a long time and even put the house up for sale in order to settle some pending issues. The police thought he'd might owe money to someone dangerous, a moneylender perhaps. The third theory was related to the couple's constant fights. The police believed that maybe Fernando could have killed his wife and two daughters and had killed himself or was hiding. According to family members, the couple fought frequently, but nothing so extreme, so this theory was discarded. The first theory was that the family could have been kidnapped. However, no one asked for ransom and if it was lightning kidnapping, the couple's accounts were supposed to have been cleared, but that didn't happen and the police quickly dismissed that theory as well. Journalists at the time even raised the hypothesis of a possible connection between Fernando and a Mexican drug cartel. Since he was a chemist and had some knowledge of chemical manipulation for the production of narcotics, the fifth theory was that the family had been robbed while traveling and the robbers had killed them. This theory was more accepted by authorities in the beginning. However, as there was no witness to corroborate this version, and also the family car was not in a junkyard that the police searched, this theory was soon discarded. The sixth and final theory was that the family had been in an accident. 
However, the police claimed they had already made air and ground sweeps along the entire route the family had taken and nothing was found. So, they concentrated on rivers and streams near the region where they also found nothing. The days went by and the case became more and more full of mystery. But after all, where was the Palmer family? The whole Argentina had its eyes on the investigations. Everyone wanted to know what had happened to this family. The authorities even gave a press conference affirming the possibility of offering a reward for information that could lead them to the whereabouts of the family and reiterated that the search would continue without a time limit. A big search was organized once again. The police included horse, dog, foot, plane, helicopter and even boat patrols. They searched the entire area the Pomer family had passed through and other nearby regions, but nothing was found. There was no sign of the family. On December 8, 2009, a Fiat Duna weekend vehicle was found overturned on the side of the highway on Route 31, near the city of Salto. All the bodies of the four family members were inside the vehicle in an advanced state of decomposition. This was the same place where Casimiro Frutos said he saw the vehicle on November 16th and again on November 30th, where he was completely ignored. This ended up shocking the police and the population, because according to the authorities, they made a thorough search of the place and found nothing. Everyone started to question, did someone kill the family and then simulate an accident by putting the car there? Or did they actually have an accident and the police were incompetent? In the autopsy, it was found that the family had suffered numerous injuries, ranging from rupture to several broken bones, as well as a craniocephalic leak due to the strong impact they suffered on their heads. With the exception of Gabriela, who died at the time of the impact, the other family members remained alive for a few hours after the accident. Despite several theories about a conspiracy where the accident was only to mask a greater crime, the final conclusion was that the family had indeed suffered an accident and the police did not do their job as they should have done. The Argentine population was revolted by this. The family's relatives sued the police and other people responsible for the investigation for not having done the job correctly and have even raised theories accusing Fernando of having been responsible for their disappearance. This eventually led to the dismissal of several officers who were responsible for the search and investigation into the family's whereabouts. Today, in the place where the family car and their bodies were found, a small chapel was built in their honor, where there is a photo of the family with some scriptures. People who pass by the place usually leave flowers or some gift to honor them. The Palmer family, they being Fernando Pomar, Gabriela Villagran, and their two daughters, Candelaria and Pilar, left their home for a trip to the city of Pergamino. What was supposed to be a peaceful family trip ended up tragically where they all lost their lives in an accident. Perhaps, if the police had actually searched as they should have, some of them would have been saved and the tragedy would have been less. However, the police took a while to find them and unfortunately, it was too late. Well guys, that's it. Thanks for watching me this far. I'm staying right here. Best wishes and I see you next time.